it's good to be talking to you all today. Um, I'm going to go through a process we've kind of developed going beyond grayscale in our relief. Every project, every story we do has a life in print and in digital. And so we need to be very flexible in what we do. Every map we build comes out of Map Publisher because we can resize it, re, re, uh, recreate it in a digital space. We're responsible for four publication lines. Um, I, let me just say, our job is the best. You know, we, we love doing it. We're telling stories with maps. We get to delve into the science, figure out what matters to people, and then put it into the biggest stage possible. Uh, National Geographic Magazine has on the order of two million subscribers, and our website has about an, an equal amount as well. So stories we do come out of the magazine to go to the website. History Magazine is a, a smaller title, but we also are creating our maps custom for that as well. And then NG Kids and Little Kids are being redesigned so that our children will be reading the same stories as our adults, just on a level that they can understand. So uh, it's an exciting time to be at uh, National Geographic. But what I want to show is uh, around the time we were doing our 11th edition atlas, we wanted to do uh, a brand new take on our physical maps. Before they were painted, they were painted in 1962. And so we had just been reusing them over and over and over again. Well, we took them and we uh, created a cross-blended look with shaded relief. But when you have grayscale and cross-blending, it, it kind of muddies the color some. So this is our first kind of take on it. Through experimentation, oh, sorry. Mirror screen, I wish it was voice activated. I'll just move it over. There we go. Familiar place in the world, the Alps. What we experimented with. Oh, I lost my mouse. Was how to get the grayscale into a uh, a color rather than just uh, something that muddies over it. So we developed a system to use adjustment layers in Photoshop. And I'm going to walk you through how you can also create these as uh, as part of your workflow. You see the yellow part of the the cross blending is now uh, less muddy. It's it's in yellow instead of a yellow combined with gray. So I'm giving you a preview, too. Every issue of National Geographic has between four and five feature maps. This is one that's upcoming in our January issue on the uh, monarch butterflies and uh, the, the status of that species. And it's going to be accompanied by a bunch of beautiful rendered art um, and, as you can imagine, beautiful photography. So the map also needs to be beautiful. Uh, so we're, we're working to, uh, to get the specs right, the arrows right, but importantly, the relief right as well. Sorry, this is awkward. Let me fix this. This is not going to be helpful to you if you can't see the tools. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 
Does anyone know the, the name of the screen? It's not giving me a, uh, I cannot get this to mirror, I'm sorry. All right, model through. This is relief that's generated for it straight out of Natural Scene Designer. That's the, the program that we, uh, we prefer. Um, it has a lot of control for generalization and exaggeration and uh, a pretty robust suite of projections that you can create custom relief out of. I apologize, this is really awkward. I can't see. All right. Uh, any technical folks who are familiar with Mac and the eccentricities of screen sharing, if you have a, a moment to come and help me troubleshoot this, it would be much appreciated. Can't get it to mirror. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Now we're in business. All right. Our relief. So this is in RGB. Um, we, we start from that. That's a straight output from the uh, Natural Scene Designer program. And uh, the, the key here is to isolate the, um, the relief into one channel. So I'm going to do that now. Start with your mode. You take it to multi-channel. Sorry. Sorry, grayscale, discard, image, mode, multi-channel. So now we have a channel just called black. It's not black, it's just uh, the, the values for the relief. We create a new channel, put it above. Now we can convert it from multi-channel to grayscale, and then multi-channel to CMYK. Now I have an extra channel here, this black. This is fake black, real black. So if I, if I turn off fake black, there's nothing. The image is blank. We need to get this black into just the black channel. So you do that via apply image. We select the fake black, and that will put it into, first you have to select the, the uh, CMYK. Make sure you select just one channel. And now, what was in all four channels is now just in the black channel. We're not done with this fake black. Load the selection. And it'll look like it doesn't have the whole image. It looks like it's got pieces. It's actually got the whole thing. And you head down to your layers and create a levels adjustment layer. So what we've done now is taken the entirety of the relief data and turned it into an adjustment layer. We can say goodbye to old black. 
big bag. Now, anytime I put the, uh, this is now, this is a, a black channel now, I'll call it relief, okay. If I turn this off, it looks like there's no relief. It's not gonna appear until we add data. head back to Illustrator. In the layers, we have some land. Let's grab the land. And a secret, if you want, all of your data to snap from Illustrator to Photoshop seamlessly, effortlessly, without any problems. Create a frame around the TIFF at the exact same size. Anything within that frame so I've got the land. Anything within that frame will then effortless, effortlessly paste exactly where it's supposed to be in the Photoshop file. Zoom up. So now, with this adjustment layer, we just drag the, side, the slider over, and we will end up with shaded relief in just the color of the data. So this was a gray background, now it's applied to the gray. But the best part about this is that you can layer data without multiplying. So let's grab this milkweed data. Don't forget the paste frame. All we have to do is put it under the adjustment layer, and now we have relief in the color of the data, not in grayscale. So this, this allows for a great deal of flexibility, a great deal of um, uh, saved effort, especially if you have light boundaries over relief, they will appear in this in the light color without having to do a lot of masking and a lot of, of uh, intensive Photoshop work. So. We take great advantage of this, and, and it allows our, our uh, maps to be reused, resized, um, new relief swapped in just through this process. Uh, a lot faster and uh, a lot easier to, uh, to manipulate. So that's, that's how we get beyond grayscale at National Geographic.